for Ron. Welcome to Build, Ron. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you all so much. All the love. I, uh, it's beautiful. Oh. More love, guys. Give him more love. Yeah. Well, I just have to say, what a powerful, wonderful performance you gave in This Is Us this season. The first season of a show that will, I'm sure, have many, many more seasons to come. But your performance was really spectacular. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate that. Um, Tell me about how you got involved um, in the show and, and what kind of drew you into the story because it really is a, a beautiful show. Well, it was the, the, the usual process of the audition. You know, I got the call, Bernie Telsey casting. Um, I, I got the sides prior to that and looked at the sides and as soon as I read the sides, I knew it was something special. Um, when you read as many scripts as I've read over the years, you know, you, you can actually see and start to feel what's really good and what's not, you know, so. I felt it was something special, so I prepared for it, did a lot of homework on it, and went in and, uh, and um, just laid it down and, um, and got hired for the role, got cast. You know, um, It was really special because um, Dan Fogelman, the uh, head writer and producer, sent me a beautiful email right after the day, day after. And when I booked the role, I didn't get a call back. I didn't have to go through the process of uh, meeting producers at that point. Um, he sent me a beautiful email and said, uh, your work was beautiful, beautifully layered, and it's exactly what I was looking for. So um, I was extremely happy about that. And what a role to take on. It, um, for everyone who hasn't seen This Is Us, you should be watching it, by the way. Uh, I think it's on Hulu now. Yeah. Um, William is a powerful, it's a, it's a role that has a lot of twists and turns. And, and so how did you kind of get into that mental state of playing him and, um, you know, through illness and, yeah. and with his adopted son? Well, it's, 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 it's interesting because I knew William. I grew up with men like him. Um, a large part of him is uh, inside me already. So it was more about reaching inside and remembering the men that I grew up with like him, the similarities you, you, you automatically reach for. What is it about this character that is about me, you know, that's similar to me? And, but uh, the layered part of it, I just felt like I knew him so well from all the different men that I grew up with. Um, also him being an artist, a jazz musician, which um, I'm a jazz aficionado. Uh, um, I've run these streets all over New York, going to different jazz clubs over the years, you know, from the Village Gate to the Vanguard, you know, to Birdland. So um, I felt that was close to me. The fact that he had Southern roots, my family had Southern roots. Um, and also the illness, you know, um, my best friend, um, and I say this in tribute to him, passed away yesterday from this dreaded disease. So he was in Los Angeles and we would talk every day. I would go on set, do the role of William and come back and get on the phone and talk with him. And he was so proud of me, you know, and uh, so I, I, I watched him deteriorate over the time that uh, he was with us at the end. So. That was very uncanny and, 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 and kind of surreal, you know? Um, but uh, it, it, it was a, a big part of also uh, how I got a lot of the mannerisms and, and uh, looks of uh, the layers of the man um, because it was in my best friend as I would talk to him, would sit down and we would have coffee together. So, but initially the character was just I just knew him so well, so many men like him that I grew up with, you know, um, from country to city to country, you know. I'm so very sorry for your loss. Thank you, um, thank you. The beautiful thing about the show, though, is that it really relates to actual things that happen in every person's life, every family's life, well, and it touches been, on those, yeah, those it's real been an, stories. It's been a healing process yeah. for a lot of people, and also for myself, you know, but the feedback that I get on the streets when people come up to me all the time, and it's like, I just felt like it was so healing, and I wanted to be able to say that to my uncle or my aunt or my mother before she passed, or, you know, I had the same feelings growing up, you know, um, with someone in their family. So uh, it's been a healing process and a beautiful thing, you know, uh, to be able to touch people in that way um, and feel like it's been a healing process also. So that even makes it more special, you know. Um, but the writing, the writing was just, it's just awesome writing because it's so layered and it's everything that an actor wants to do, you know? Um, find those layers in, in the humanity of, of him. 
And I think that's what people are relating to, you know, they're feeling the, those feelings that we usually suppress on a daily basis, you know. Um, usually we turn on the TV to get away from our feelings, you know. We go to a movie or hear some music or um, go out with friends and have drinks, you know, to, to not feel. Uh, but this show is allowing people to actually feel and talk about their feelings. And sometimes we suppress a lot of stuff that we don't know is there, our fears. Um, so it's bringing out a lot of that. And so that's the beauty, I think, of the show and the writing. You know, Every episode I watched, I laughed, but then I cried. You cried. I always end up crying. <laughs> and my right. husband would walk in and say, what happened? Like, what is, <laughs> this is us, was on. Yeah. I swear, it gets me every time. Absolutely. Uh, did the scripts kind of speak to you in the same way where you got emotional reading them? I do. Yeah. yeah. And watching the scenes, you know, and everybody's so wonderful in it, you know, from the, the issues that Chrissy goes through and how she portrays that, the issues with um, Jack and Rebecca with their children, adoption, um, overweight, disease, relationships between brothers, um, uh, interracial relationships. Uh, it, there's so many really interesting and deep issues that come out of the show with love, you know, as opposed to shoot 'em ups or, you know, stuff blowing up, you know, but it's more about getting to those feelings, but with love, you know? So how did you get to those feelings with your, you know, most of the time you're on screen with Sterling K. Brown. Can we give it up for him, too? Yeah, what an incredible yeah, absolutely. Actor. Yeah. He's had quite a year as well. Yes, he has. Um, how did you guys kind of bond and get ready to play this father and son duo that so many people have fallen in love with? Well, it's interesting. Sterling and I w work very similar together. I knew uh, about Sterling here in New York when he was doing a play, a Susan Laurie Parks play at The Public. Father comes home from the wars, and he got a lot of attention uh, for that role. And then he went on to do television and then just kind of blew up after that. So we had similar ways of working together. And it just seemed very symbiotic. We just knew when we looked at each other that um, um, the relationship just seemed to be there. Um, it's hard to explain, but certain actors, when they work a certain way, are very similar in the way that they layer characters. You can feel it and you know it when you look at them in their eyes. So we didn't have to talk a lot about it. We just let it happen. And just in that way, we trusted it. It's a, a lot of trust that has to go into working with another actor in that way. So we felt um, really comfortable with one another and trusting one another and um, having the experience of being here in New York and uh, in the theater um, for many years. So we just kind of brought that work with us and it just kind of unfolded and we didn't get in the way of it. You know, We just kind of let it happen. And it just sort of unfolded in the way that it did. And that's the best way to work when you have someone that works like that, where you, know, you don't have to speak a lot. You just feel a lot. And we let each other feel. And then the brilliance of the words and the brilliance of the writing, then it's just about getting out of the way yeah. and just like letting it happen. And it's, uh, it, it's difficult. And that's the process of acting. It's, it's learning how to not act but trust that the feelings that you have and opening yourself up and reaching inward to it and, and being fearless and to expose those particular things that are really about you also, yeah. you know? And then it comes out to be, it looks more real and it feels more real. And I think that's what the audience is connecting to also, you know? Was there one scene in particular for you that, um got you emotional or that you can remember or look back on and say, wow, I was, I was feeling a lot in that moment when me and Sterling or Susan or the girls were shooting this. I think the, the one that really hit me the most when I instantly cried was when the push-up scene at the dojo, you know, with the oh, father and the son. Yeah, and, and um, wow, I'm even thinking about it now, you know what I mean? Just the relationship between father and son Either you've had that in your life or you didn't have it and you wanted it. And um, my dad wasn't very close to me in that way. He wasn't intimate with me in that way. He wasn't very touchy or feely, you know. So when I saw it, I remember feeling the longing mm -hmm. that I wanted to have with my dad. I wish he would have hugged me more or, or held my cheeks, you know. So that part of me just kind of came out and I just burst in tears, you know. So... That was the first one. Then it was a series of a bunch of other ones also after that. Once I gave myself license to feel oh my like everyone else when I watched the episode, I cried. 
you know, because it brings up stuff in me too. You know, I'm not just an actor, but I'm a fan also of the show and the writing and all the actors that are working uh, up in Milo and Chrissy and Susan and, and Justin and, and, and the little girls, Faith and, and Eris and everyone uh, is just bringing the work and it's just, it's just beautiful to be around it, you know. Yeah, you had beautiful scenes with Faith and Eris. What, what a cute... Oh, man. What a cute trio that was, right, guys? And I didn't have to look far for that because I have a daughter. Yes. My daughter's 27 now, but it just immediately brought me back to those years when she was that age. Yeah. So again, it wasn't about reaching outward, but it was about reaching inward yeah. and, and, and having that layer to where when you see William talking to the girls, you feel like there's an intimacy with him and these, these two little girls, you know, so... Yeah. Well, I don't want this to be a spoiler. I don't think it's a spoiler, but uh, your death scene in the, in the show was one where I could not stop crying. Mm. I, it really got me. Mm. Um, what a beautiful moment in the show. And I think it might have been the best of the whole season. I mean, wow, it was so powerful. You. Yeah, that, that episode was something else, the Memphis episode. Um, again, Lee, it was one of those situations where Strolling and I didn't have to talk much, and it was very difficult to do. And we got it in a couple of takes, and the, the cinematographers uh, and the directors, um, um, uh, um, uh, Glenn and John, um, helped us with that, you know, made it easy for us to not have to do it over and over and over. But uh, I think we did maybe two at the most three of that tight shot that, that they needed, you know, um, so that we didn't have to drag it on. And Sterling and I just opened up and just let the scene breathe and let it happen. And I remember John coming and saying, wow, we, we got it. We don't really have to do it again. We got it, you know? So we were happy about that not to do it. And they did that part of it. That was the first thing we did during the day. So we didn't have to wait and string it out until the end of the day, you know? So, so yeah, that was, uh, that was special. Memphis, the whole, the whole day. Yeah, being in Memphis was, was, was uh, very, very beautiful, yeah. Speaking of stringing it out, though, we kind of had a feeling that William was not going to make it through season one. And man, every episode, we're like, is it going to happen to Oh, it was I excruciating. I, I was the same <laughs> way. I would come in each day in the, in, the, in, the, in the dressing room and I would open the script going, is this the day that they're going to kill him, you know? And it was so hard. I can imagine William feeling the same way, waking up each day not knowing if it's going to be your last day. So Ron, as the actor, would wake up each day and go, oh, okay, I hope. I'm wondering if this is the scene, this is, you know, and I also as the actor and, and Ron, I didn't want to leave. Yeah. You know, I wanted to stay a part of the show. I wanted to stay a part of the family that we've created there. And, and lo and behold, that, that happened, you know. So uh, that's the next thing for season two. Yeah, know? guys, Ron will be back in season yeah. two. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's really beautiful the way they uh, write the show. It's very similar to Jack's character. We, we already know that he's died, but we see his whole life you know, throughout the season. So now, uh, season two, we'll be able to go back and fill in those spaces uh, and those questions that people have about William, you know, with this relationship with Jesse, or how did he become a musician? Um, um, how did he get from Memphis to, to, to Philadelphia? You know, so we can go back now and um, what and how and where they're going to write, I have no idea. But uh, I'm just really blessed and happy that I'll be back for season two. Yeah, we're very happy, too, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Do you have any sort of hints that you can share with the audience? Or you're still kind of in the dark, too, about what exactly Absolutely, is... Absolutely. Yeah. Completely in the dark. I mean, I have no idea. I only can speculate yeah. uh, some of the things that they might do, which I just said. So, um, But I'm fine with that, yeah. you know. I'm fine with that. I'm, the way they write, the writers and Dan... I'm sure it's going to be something really brilliant and beautiful. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I know, because we have to touch, too, a little bit on, I mean, Jack and Rebecca, it didn't end well, and I'm That's freaking right. out. I'm like, That's right. what's going to And we all thought, Jack, after your tragic death on screen, and then I was waiting for Jack's in the finale. I was that's like, this right. is too much. Everyone was like, no, that's yeah. too much. It's just too much right now, you know? But yet, still, people were anticipating, and some people were very disappointed that they didn't get that information, but also... 
a lot of people were like, good, we don't, I don't want to know right now. We'll go to season two and see what happens, you know. So. Yeah, it really didn't end on too much of a happy note. Yeah, that's right. That's what right. was it like? What's it like in the table reads for This Is Us? Are you guys all just sitting there crying? And like, Yeah, well, you sound? know, we're going, we're reading along and we're going, oh, yeah, oh, uh, you know, oh my fucking God, mama, 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 mama. you know, it's like, and we're laughing and we're looking at each other and we're going, oh no, and everybody's like turning the page. And so it's definitely a page turner and exciting and, and a lot of fun, man, to get there together and read it for the first time together, not knowing what's going to be on the page. So um, that's been great, man, yeah. We're like a family. I saw some pictures from the uh, upfronts where you guys are all back together. It's great. Yeah, we're so excited, yeah, man. We, we, we just saw each other for the first time since the series uh, season one ended, and we came back for the upfronts in New York. But this is the first time we've been all together. You know, we have a, um, a, text, uh, a family text thing that we do. Oh, so we are able to keep in touch with one another during the course of this season. And so um, it's just crazy. So many things that they post on there. A lot of stuff goes over my head, you know, but um, the jokes and the, and the gifts and all the stuff that I'm just learning about. Technically, I'm so improficient at, at this whole stuff, but I'm learning, yeah. you know, but uh, it's been great. Yeah. So did you take them around at all? Um, you're, you grew up in Patterson, New Jersey. Patterson, New Jersey. Ooh. Lived in, been, yeah, been living in New York most of my life, you know, right after high school, went to college here and. Ramapo State College up in Marwa Valley and uh, started coming into the city when I was, even when I was a kid, my mother brought me to the Apollo to see the James Brown Review when I was six <laughs> years old, you know, and this was like, what, 1964 or 65, you know, so I just turned 60 this year. So um, uh, I've, been, I've been in love with New York ever since, in Harlem in particular, so I've been living in Harlem for the, for the in New York, in and around New York, all over the place. I've lived in Brooklyn, Lower East Side, Lower East Seda, when it was called Lower East Seda, mm -hmm. or Alphabet City, yeah. you know, and, and, and Harlem. Uh, so this is my town, man. I've been all over these streets, man. You run this town. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how is it, uh, you know, being at the upfronts in New York City? Did you take the cast around to any of your favorite places? I haven't places had time or, to. Yeah. I wish I could, you know, maybe the next time around or something when we get a chance to have some time. But... Um, all of us have been very busy right now, you know, promoting the show and doing the PR for the next season. So um, I would love to do that. You know, there's some spots I would love to take these cats to, you know. So and there's this music here that I that I want to see. And my friends have called me when they found out I came to New York. And, but I have no time to get with anybody, you know. So hopefully the next time around, I'm coming back in June to start second season of Luke Cage. So um, so I'll get a chance to be here for for a while, so I'll get a chance to see some friends and, and come downtown and hear some music and then head back up in Harlem to hear some spots that, um, that I usually frequent when I'm here, you know, yeah. And you are a busy guy. Yeah, He's on Mr. Good. Robot, Banshee, yeah. Luke Cage. What else have you been the on? The Get Robert? Down. The Get Down. Yeah, the writer on The Get Down is, was my roommate. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning playwright. And we've been working together since uh, in the early 90s, I did several of his plays, you know, Stephen Adley Gerges, his name is, and uh, he won a uh, Pulitzer Prize for the play that was on Broadway. Um, I, don't, I can't curse, but it, it, there's a curse word in the title, but it's the MF with the hat. Yeah. Uh, Chris Rock and Bobby Cannavale <laughs> were doing that, and uh, I did a play of his called um, uh, Between Riverside and Crazy at Second Stage just a couple of years ago, and a play called Jesus Off the A Train, Our Lady of 121st Street. Um, so on theater, I've been doing theater here all my life, most of my career, and it's just recently in the last maybe four, four or five years that I'm doing more television, uh, especially the high profile stuff, you know, so. Stuff. Yeah. Very accomplished in the theater. Uh, yeah. How, how has it been for you to kind of transition from the stage to the screen? It's been great, mostly financial. I can pay my yeah. rent now. <laughs> Worry about paying my rent so much now, you know, but um, I, love I love the theater. My first love is the boards, you know, and transferring that work onto stage and film has been a joy, you know, something I've been always wanting to do more of, you know, so now that that's happening, I'm able to transfer and translate the work on the boards into film and television, which has been great, you know, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that, you know. 
And you mentioned your daughter before. Everyone better know uh, Jasmine, his daughter, is in ha was in Hamilton, yeah. the original yeah. cast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she played uh, Peggy Schuler. Is it Schuler? Yeah. Schuyler? Yeah. Schuyler. Thank you, darling. And, um, and yeah. uh, Mar uh, Mariah Reynolds, yeah. the love interest of Hamilton. Yeah, man. So um, she's been out to L.A., uh, came out to visit, doing pilot season. And, but uh, she's a New York actor also, and she's involved in the theater company that I've been involved in, the Labyrinth Theater Company now, and, um, and she's doing something in a couple of days, some kind of um, program with Labyrinth through Labyrinth people, so um, awesome. yeah, she's still visible and doing her thing too, you know, so. Did you always know that she would um, be an actress herself? I didn't. You didn't? And uh, Although I dragged her around the theater all her life. You, you were know saying I mean? that, yeah. she'd come with you to That's auditions. That's right, and auditions and stuff, and her mother is a world-class singer, you know, um, so. But it was, um, I guess, just before high school or during high school where she said, you know, Dad, how do you feel about me being an actor? And I said, I think you could be a great actor, you know. So, and she started to learn about it and she got involved in our theater company, became a member and started doing workshops. And, and then eventually she, she got an agent and she booked uh, Hamilton. Yeah. yeah, not a bad show to book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think she's doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. How Thanks does she feel about you? on This Is Us and in all these cool Luke Cage, The Get Down, Netflix, killing it. Yeah, yeah, Netflix. It was great, you know, to be able to have work here in New York. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. It was like, you don't necessarily have to go to Los Angeles now to, to get work in film and television. They have um, sound stages now that are here in New York, so um, it was great that Netflix um, films a lot of this stuff right here in New York. And So uh, that's been great. She, she loves it. We talk about the work all the time. Um, the This Is Us stuff, she doesn't really watch that much. It's too close to home, and it's so, it's so layered and so real for her. So, um, and that's fine. You know, she'll come around when she's ready to do so, you know, and if not, that's cool, too. You know? Let's buy her some tissues and she'll yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I do want to open it up to some audience yeah, questions. Sure. So. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, so I love that you guys have a group chat. I think that's adorable. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering um, if you could play any of the other... Uh, roles of your cast members, uh, which one would it be and why? Probably, um, I love Sterling's role also. I think, I, I mean, I, of course I relate to that role too, you know, I think that's the closest to me. Um, but I'd like to do all of them. Jack is a great character, you know, I love, I love Chris's role, um, um, who plays Toby, you know. Um, I guess I would instantly say Sterling's role, Randall, yeah, because it's also so layered. You know, um, it's interesting because um, he brought and introduced the whole issue of panic attacks. And I started to learn more about that. And you don't realize how many people walk around that have that, that thing, that panic attack thing. And so I learned a lot about that, you know, and about um, how to manage it with people. You know, when you find out or when you see someone now, when you know about it, how to be able to approach them and rub their back and, and, and speak in a voice that, that helps to soothe and calm the heartbeat down. And so um, that's what I mean by layers, you know, and that scene where his brother, uh, Justin, he leaves his play to run to his brother and, and he sees it. And for the first time, those two make that connection and it, that scene was just, it's so layered and so powerful that it just opens you up and, and you feel it. And then you go, wow, this panic attack thing is really real, you know, and it's, you just can't pass it over for all you just, you're just afraid. It's like, no, this is some real stuff, man. And it cripples people, you know? So um, anyway, I got off track, but that's what I mean by this, that the writing is just so beautifully layered, you know? I need some tissues up here. I'm <laughs> just thinking about these scenes. <laughs> here we go. Hi, thanks so much for coming. And that Memphis episode was really one of the finest hours on TV this yeah, season. Yeah, thank Fan you. Fantastic thank job. Thank you so much. Question, so from when you first read William and your interpretation of him, can you talk about anything as you did the character over the season that sort of made you change course in terms of how you portrayed him? Not so much change course, but um, what I found out was I was learning about him during the course. So what I found out was um, another layer would open up and I would go, oh, wow, that's interesting, you know, that I didn't know while I was doing it from like, say, episode two to episode five, 
I would find out more about him or something would connect with me. I might be laying down in my bed or eating breakfast and I would be looking at the sides and then, and then it would just hit me. Oh, wow, look at that, it's there, that's there. And then I would go on set and play that layer and everybody would be like, wow, I didn't see that. I was like, yeah, I found it last night when I was eating my cereal. I'm looking at so, you know, and one of the things I learned, and Philip Seymour Hoffman taught me this, who was the artistic director of our company, Labyrinth Theater Company, is to always constantly read the script. Keep the script close to you all the time because you never know what's gonna come out of it after you read it the 25th time. You might find something else. And so I, I, I adopted that that attitude and also actioning words where you can put an action to each word or each phrase. Well, to, to stab, to hurt, to soothe, to, so these, these action words that can jump you into a layer that you didn't know was there before. So that's how you mark your scripts and then you keep that script with you and as you flip through the pages each and every day, a layer will open up that you didn't know was there before. So it's more, it's more than just memorizing your script and then putting it away and going, it's like keeping the script. You memorize it, but keep reading it because that seventh time you read it, you'll find something else in there that you didn't had you not. You know? So that's the part of the homework that, that a lot of actors forget. It's, it's a lot about homework. It's about how you study. It's about how you develop your script. It's about how much you read and understand and try to keep finding layers in the script. And it comes from the words. It has to come from the words. That's why actors are so happy and delighted when they get good scripts to, to, that have meat and that have layer. And that's what you want to do, you know? So it becomes so much more about what you do behind the scenes, the homework that you put into it. And I learned that from being on the boards, you know, and sustaining long runs for a long period of time and keeping the work fresh when you have to do a play night after night after night. And you realize you don't do the same thing. Not if you do the same words and the same blocking, but you're constantly layering and finding new layers, you know, each night that you go on. And that's the exciting part about doing a play. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I need some acting lessons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have time for one yeah. more. Hi, Ron. Um, huge fan of yours. Also Thank a huge you. fan of Jasmine's as well. Um, Thank you. I actually got to be at her final performance of Hamilton, so that was oh, very special. Oh, beautiful, yes. Um, so I'm curious, you know, if you were to come back to the stage one day, would you and Jasmine consider doing something together? Absolutely. We've already started. We did a film together in London, a film called Titus. You might be able to find it online. It's a beautiful little black and white film. I was there with the Bridge Project, doing working at the Old Vic, uh, doing... Um, of Caliban and The Tempest, and we were also doing As You Like It. It was a collaboration with London actors and New York actors. It was a three-year thing. Um, uh, Kevin Spacey ended up doing the third year. He did Richard III. And uh, during that summer, we did a film together. And now um, uh, writers are contacting us and, and, and trying to develop something for us. And so quite a few people have called me already to say, I got this script with you and Jasmine. You think Jasmine want to do it? I'm, I wanted to play your daughter or, or what have you. So, so yes, to answer your question, hopefully that will manifest someday. We're looking forward to that. I would love to work with her. She's a, she's a very fine actor too, you know, very fine actor. So I'm looking forward to that, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna buy my tickets tonight, <laughs> even though it's not happening yet, but it will, that would be awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it up there and see what happens, yeah. you know. Well, I hope to see you um, at all the award shows, especially the Emmys, right? Oh, right. God bless. Thank you so much, man. Thank you uh, all. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you all for being here. God bless. Thank you all very much.